Michigan voters went to the polls on August 6th to determine who would advance to the general election on November 5th. There was tons of fun to be had at Friendship Park during Orient Township's annual Big Rig gig. With the first day of school just weeks away, Heidi Mercer steps in as Lake Orient School's new superintendent. The high school football season is here, kicking off on August 29th. We will talk to several OA coaches heading into this year's media day here from Rochester High School. Hello, I'm Lexi McKinney. And I'm Stacey Calloway. We'll have those stories and so much more on this edition of Owen TV News. Michigan voters were asked to go to the polls to cast a ballot in the August 6th primary election. Many candidates ran unopposed, but in some cases the results set up some interesting showdowns for the November 8th general election. According to results posted on the Oakland County Clerk's website, less than 25% of registered voters took part in the primary election. In Orion Township, Supervisor Chris Barnett ran unopposed, and only four Republican candidates ran to fill four vacancies on the Board of Trustees. John Carson, Mike Flood Jr., Carrie Hilgendorf, and Jack Lavat. There were no Democratic candidates other than write-ins. In the race for Orion Township Clerk, Julia Dalrymple defeated Braden Jacobatsi, 2,785 votes to 1,138. There were no Democratic candidates running for the position vacated by current Township Clerk Penny Schultz. Schultz, however, ran for the position of Orion Township Treasurer against Matt Pfeiffer, Pfeiffer pulled off a narrow victory with 21-24 votes to 2016, a difference of 108 votes. Again, there were no Democratic candidates. In the race for U.S. Senator, Democrat Alyssa Slotkin defeated Hill Harper. Slotkin will face Republican Mike Rogers in November, who won by a wide margin over his opponents. Most of the candidates running for county offices were unopposed, with Republicans and Democrats facing off in November. In one notable exception, Democrat Jim Nash defeated Jim Stevens and will face Republican Steve Johnson, who defeated Steve Klein in the race for Water Resources Commissioner. In the nonpartisan race for judge of the Sixth Circuit Court, the top two vote getters will advance to the general election in November. Again, all Victoria's candidates and those running unopposed will advance to the general election on November 5th. If you're not registered, you can register to vote and vote in person on Election Day if you bring proof of residency. If you plan on voting absentee, it's recommended that you request your ballot no later than October 15th. For more information, contact the Township Clerk's Office at 248-391-0304, extension 4001. Throughout the year, Orion Township Parks and Recreation offers free events that the whole family can enjoy. Recently, residents were invited to come out for a fun event that puts smiles on the faces of the young and the young at heart. On the evening of Friday, August 2nd, the 21st annual Big Rig Gig kicked off in Orion Township with trucks, police cars, fire trucks, tractors, bulldozers, construction equipment, and more, making Friendship Park a popular destination from 5 to 9. Every year, this free event allows families to experience meeting staff members who work the vehicles every day while also climbing through the dozens of vehicles, honking the horns, and welcoming all in the Oakland County community to come together. The event was made possible thanks to several generous sponsors. It's amazing because you see adults with their kids. It's just so wonderful to bring the whole community out for a night like this, and it's free. It's free. It doesn't cost anything to get in. So young people are here, older people are here. They just all come together, multi-generational. You've got grandparents with their kids and their grandkids. They're all here just having a blast. And it's very noisy, but nobody cares. <laughs> Though rain was expected leading up to the Big Rig gig, the evening turned out sunny with families able to see all of the Big Rigs while also making their way to order food from 13 food trucks located around the park. 
So it was interesting this year, it's our second annual at the Big Rig gig, but it's the Chamber's uh, fifth, I think, annual of the annual food truck festival. But last year we decided to bring it here to the Big Rig gig where the food trucks had a built-in audience of between 7,500 and 10,000 people. So you can imagine the food trucks are happy campers or happy truckers. So this year it was interesting because I sent the word out there to the um, food trucks from last year and I posted on social media and I sent it out to some other food truck lists and within 24 hours I had the 10 food trucks so everybody wanted to come back and we had a long wait list so that was really kind of fun knowing that they want to come here because it's such a well attended and well organized event. For first responders, the Big Rig Gig is a night designed to connect with the community, share laughs, and teach children of the many unique career paths that they can look forward to. Well, it's just really good to be able to get out. Um, we're able to spend so much more time nowadays to be able to show what the fire department does. We've done great things with the fire department over the last couple years, and we've kind of had to hide it with everything that's gone on with the pandemic and all. So now we can actually get out. We've got new ambulances in the fleet. We've got new fire trucks in the fleet. And this is our time to kind of showcase that to the community. They've been very gracious to us and being able to give us the, the ability to make these purchases. And so this allows us to give back to them and be able to, to show off what we've been able to do. You know, it's, it's the whole community coming together. I mean, we've got police departments, fire departments, sheriff's department, um, construction equipment, tree services. Everybody is here for one cause, to have fun with the children. So, and that's the biggest the biggest thing we're here, reason we're here. It's just great to see all of the departments kind of get together, and I think days like today are days that kids are going to remember for a long time. The Big Rig gig is made for those of all ages, young or old, and the experience is one of the most memorable. You could go in any single one of these trucks, if you were a kid or now, which one would it be and why is that? All right, so my dad was a firefighter. I grew up at West Blue. Field fire station number one. We you would go there to have dinner with our dad and climb on the trucks, but we were never allowed to touch the ladder truck. So I want to climb on the ladder truck. I want to go all the way up. And ironically, I work with these people now, and they still don't let me touch the ladder truck. So that's the one I want to get on. We call it the aerial. They have different you know fancy names for it. But I want to go way up on that bucket. I'm not allowed to touch it. That's the one. Or that would be the one. Or I want to drive one of these garbage trucks and pick up all the garbage. <laughs> Next up on the calendar, Orion Township will be hosting another community garage sale in the parking lot of the Orion Center on Saturday, August 17th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Dozens of vendors will be set up outside offering a wide variety of items with township staff set up indoors to purge a few items of their own. For more information, visit orionparks.com. In May, Lake Orion School Superintendent Ben Kirby announced he would be leaving the position to accept a job with Forest Hills Public Schools near Grand Rapids. The school board immediately began a search for his replacement, selecting five potential candidates in June and conducting interviews in July. On July 18th, the Board of Education voted 7-0 to zero to hire Heidi Mercer as the district's next superintendent of schools. Her contract was approved by the school board and she signed it on Wednesday, August 7th. Mercer has worked within the district for 29 years, starting out in special education at Walden Middle School before becoming assistant principal, then principal at Walden. For the past 15 years, she has served as assistant superintendent of teaching and learning alongside Ben Kirby. Being here for so many years has allowed me to make a lot of connections with people both inside the district and outside the district in the community. I live in the community. I've raised my children here. So I think it gives me that sense of um, the community feel and what the community expects. Uh, and certainly inside the district, you know, being here as many years as I have, I know the you know traditions here the things that i think our staff expects i've also been here through the good times and some tough times and so i think all of that history uh, is very helpful and uh, but just to say you know that i've been here for so many years also you know i'm also looking at how we can still be very innovative and incorporate some new ideas and um, you know work on changing some things as well Ben Kirby replaced Superintendent Marion Janopoulos in 2020 and immediately faced the challenge of steering the district throughout the challenges of the COVID pandemic. His tenure in Lake Orion came to an end on June 30th when he left for his new position at Forest Hills Public Schools. 
You know, Ben was a great superintendent. Uh, he and I worked very well together. Uh, I think certainly he has laid, you know, a great foundation, you know, through the years that he, you know, was here. And uh, I think that he will be missed and we do wish him well in Forest Hills. Heidi Mercer's first regular meeting as superintendent is scheduled to take place on Wednesday, August 28th at the school administration building. The meeting begins at 6.30 p.m. For more information, visit lakeorientschools.org. When the school year came to an end in June, the Orient Township Public Library kicked off their summer reading program to make sure students kept their minds sharp all summer long. In the blink of an eye, the summer flew by and the library brought the program to a close with the summer reading finale. On the afternoon of Saturday, August 3rd, the Orient Township Public Library celebrated the end of the summer reading program with a fun outdoor event. Attendees were treated to a presentation from the Reptarium and got to see some pretty awesome reptiles up close. There was also a chance to win some fun prizes. These prizes were generously funded through our friends of the library organization and we purchased most of our prizes from Green Hippo Gifts. They give us a great discount. The summer reading program kicked off on June 8th and more than a thousand people registered for the program that encourages readers of all ages to keep reading all summer long. Oh, it's super fun. Um, obviously the library isn't just reading. We do other activities and we inform people and, and show people all the things they can learn, even about reptiles. Um, so we do these fun shows and it's just exciting to see the kids like excited to read and learn and kind of explore different things. The Reptarium is an interactive reptile zoo located in Utica that hosts tours and birthday parties and will even bring the zoo to you. On Saturday, Reptarium staff pulled out lizards, snakes, and even an alligator. But the star of the show was this incredible albino Burmese python. It was amazing. This is so beautiful. Like We had over about 100 or so people here, and it was just amazing, filled with a lot of amazing spirits, a lot of younger kids as well. Got over a little bit of fears, too. We had some kids that were a little bit afraid of snakes and lizards and stuff like that, uh, but they were at the end able to pet them, able to hold them, which was amazing. Uh, but that's kind of what we're in for, is just making sure people know that uh, it's not supposed, something that you're supposed to be afraid of. Uh, it's okay if you are 100%, but you know, these guys, they're not going to hurt us. Uh, they are just as afraid of us as we are of them sometimes, so it's kind of getting over that fear of, hey, these guys are going to hurt us, which in reality, if they're in captivity, if they're trained, I guess you could say, if they are animals that you handle a lot, just like your pets, they are very, very friendly. If you're brave enough to get up close and personal with the friendly reptile, visit the reptarium.com for hours and ticket information or to book an event. The Scripps Mansion was built in 1927 for William Edmund Scripps, the founder of radio station WWJ. When Scripps passed away in 1952, much of the property was sold at auction, with some of it becoming parkland, and a large portion of the estate is now known as Canterbury Village. Guesthouse purchased the mansion and its surrounding land in 1956, and on a few occasions has invited the public to visit the campus. On the morning of Saturday, August 3rd, approximately 80 runners and walkers gathered on the grounds of Guesthouse in Orion Township for the start of the run over addiction 5k race. The starting line was set up under the archway of the historic Scripps Mansion and at 8.30 a.m. the race was underway. All right, have a good run. Be careful out there. Thanks for coming out and supporting. We are hosting this event to try and raise awareness about addiction and mental health issues. Uh, stigma around addiction and mental health issues is the single largest impediment to people asking for help and receiving help. And any public event that we can do to raise awareness is incredibly important. Um, we have excellent treatments for addiction and mental health and we want to make sure people are aware of those opportunities. Guest House took ownership of 100 acres of the historic Scripps Estate in 1956 and provides information, education, treatment, and care for members of the Catholic clergy suffering from addiction in all its forms. The last time Guest House hosted a 5K race in the property was in May of 2016, and organizers felt it was time to bring the event back. The epidemic of uh, opioids in this country um, has raise the bar about how important this kind of education is and uh, th the time is right for us to do something. Crossing the finish line first was 36-year-old Mike Quick of Lake Orion with a chip time of 1957. 
He did it while pushing his two children in a stroller. Oh, it's incredible. You know, I've lived in Lake Orion for almost my whole life, and I've never been back here behind the, uh, behind the white uh, the fence. We've run in the Pollyann probably hundreds of miles, so really incredible to come back here. It's beautiful. I think we might spend a little extra time here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, explore a little bit. Exactly, right? yeah. So how do you explain your first place finish? <laughs> you know, I've been running for a long time since I was uh, in grade school, and with little kids now, it's a little bit tougher, <laughs> and so that's why... I'd say about 95% of my miles are with a, a single or a double stroller, and so <laughs> that's what I did today. I brought our, the two youngest. We have an older one at home, but yeah. I brought the two youngest for their first uh, race experience in the stroller, and they loved it. They did great. <laughs> the first female to cross the finish line was 34-year-old Kelly Williams with a chip time of 22.7.7. .7. All participants received a medal at the finish line. For more information about Guest House and the services they provide, visit guesthouse.org. Earlier this year, the Lake Orion Sunrise Rotary Club hosted their Ice Golf Cup Challenge in downtown Lake Orion, which raises funds for projects like Beds for Kids, benefiting local children in need. Recently, the Rotary Club hosted another major fundraiser, this time benefiting their international charitable efforts. ONTV's Joe Johnson was at the event and brings us the story. On Saturday, August 3rd, the Lake Orion Sunrise Rotary Club hosted their 8th annual seafood boil at the home of Mark and Monica Navarro Vizina. The event was open to the public and visitors enjoyed music, silent auctions, and an authentic Cajun seafood boil. It's a lot of work. <laughs> Uh, Rotary has a motto called action, passion in action. So basically you can't just pay somebody else to put it on for you. You actually have to work it, which is the reason why you see all the people in the blue t-shirts working, serving, cooking, cleaning, etc. But the brain of it all is my husband who's from New Orleans. Uh, so the, the, the star of the show is the seafood boil. It's a Cajun seafood boil done the traditional way. All of the seafood is been shipped up from Louisiana. Uh, all the sausage on Dewey is from Louisiana. The catfish is Mississippi catfish, uh, farm-raised catfish. The crawfish are farm-raised in farms in southwest Louisiana. Gulf of Mexico shrimp that were just caught probably a week ago. Uh, so uh, it's the best of the best. And so we, uh, we we didn't spare any expense to show everybody and everyone appreciates it. I want to add we have gluten-free and non-seafood options. People Sometimes people are worried that they don't eat seafood or, or that they are you know don't eat gluten. We have lots of options for everybody. Yes, we do. Lake Orion Rotary was originally founded in the 1930s and collaborates with the high school and chamber of commerce to address individual requests for assistance and international humanitarian efforts. Proceeds from the seafood boil specifically go toward making improvements at the Casa del Nino in Cartagena, Colombia. Well, it came out by accident. This is our eighth boil and it started while we were driving through uh, the town of Cartagena, Colombia in South America. Uh, Monica's cousin was driving us and we saw a pastel colored building turned out to be the Casa del Nino which is the children's hospital in, Car in Cartagena, Colombia and uh, it turns out it was founded by Rotary which were this is a Rotary function today uh, in 1948 and we reached out to the club down there and said how can we help and it turns out they uh, had a lot of need so the first six years we're building a laparoscopic minimally invasive operating room for them which was about a quarter million dollar job uh, because of this fundraiser and other ones down there. And then uh, year seven and years eight here today is to continue raising money for the hospital, but this is gonna be an oncology pavilion, a rotary oncology pavilion for hematology oncology beds uh, and an air condition with all the monitoring equipment and pumps. And then uh, also, um, more importantly, uh, to let the kids be kids, about a 3,000 square foot air conditioned play area for the cancer kids with Game Boys, game yeah. stations, play, play things. Yeah. So. They're too sick to be playing outside. It's very, very hot and humid there. Um, I also would add that this is the only trauma three hospital in the Atlantic coast of Colombia. So it uh, takes care of you know thousands and thousands of indigent kids. Um, and it's, it's crucial to the well-being of children. Rotary Club regular meetings are held on the first, second, and fourth Thursday of every month at 7.30 a.m. at the United Methodist Church in downtown Lake Orion. For more information, visit Lake Orion Sunrise Rotary Club on Facebook, where you can find a link to their website. In Lake Orion, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ON TV News. Thanks, Joe. Wow, the food looked amazing. 
Well, believe it or not, the start of the high school football season is right around the corner, with the Lake Orion Dragons traveling to Northville on August 29th. Recently, ONTV's Sammy Taramina traveled to Rochester High School to meet with coaches and players. On Friday, August 9th, Rochester High School once again hosted OAA Media Day. Now in its 10th year, players and coaches representing the 22 teams making up the Oakland Activity Association were given an opportunity to meet with the press and look ahead to the 2024 high school football season. Something that we uh, historically like to host because it gives us an opportunity to bring everybody in the OAA together to celebrate this league, the players, the teams. Um, and it's a really great event, so thank you for everybody for showing up. Last year, the Lake Orion Dragons went 9-0 and during the regular season, 10-1 and including the playoffs, and lost to Clarkson 38-37 in the district final. I talked to Coach Chris Bell, who told me he has high expectations for the 2024 season. We've got uh, some great kids coming back. We've got some good kids coming up from the JV. So we've got we've got bodies. We've got candidates. We think we're going to be really good at those positions. That's part of high school football. We get a chance to teach them and coach them, and and uh, those guys get to step in, make a name for themselves. And so we think we're going to be fine. Talk about your schedule. You open up with Northville Week One. I mean, that's a very tough schedule when you look at it. Yeah, if I, from Northville, uh, the week two you got Stony Creek, who's going to be good with Ricky leading them. Um, the OA Red, and then finish with Celine. Every week is going to be a dogfight. That makes you better. You know, we we're, we want to play good teams. Iron sharpens iron, and if we can uh, make a run in the OA Red and uh, be playing great football at the end of the year, we'll be battle tested, and hopefully we'll make a run in the playoffs. What is your expectation this year, Coach? My expectation is, is Lake Orion will be in the thick for the OAA Red Championship. We're going to be a playoff team, and uh, we're going to be that team that nobody wants to play come playoff time. The OAA Red Division is made up of the Lake Orion Dragons, Oxford Wildcats, Clarkson Wolves, Rochester Adams Highlanders, and the West Bluefield Lakers. Let's hear what those coaches had to say. Our senior leadership, we have 24 seniors this year. Um, and a bulk load of those guys have played at this level, at the varsity level. So um, they kind of set the standard and, um, you know, we go as they go. Talk about that murder's row with schedule you got. You got Ike week one, you got Macomb, Dakota week nine. I mean, like, your schedule is absolutely brutal this year. Yeah, you know, smashed in between that is the OAA, which is, which is awesome. That's what we want. You know, you heard it a, many, a million times a day. Um, if you're going to make a run in the postseason, you got to go through the OAA and get, and get ready. So, um, obviously, winning the OAA is, is the goal. Um, you win the OAA, you're set up for success. So, um, it, we just take one game at a time, and we're prepared for everybody. Um, in terms of our schedule, obviously the, the OA Red is uh, super competitive. Um, I expect every one of those games to be a battle. And then um, non-conference, we got Belleville week one and um, you know, they've obviously had a lot of history here the last two years. They've been in the state championship game, winning one and, and coming close in the second one. And uh, Obviously, they present such a unique um, uh, situation with what they have at quarterback. So we're just looking forward to that opportunity. I've talked to the guys quite a bit about, um, you know, you'll be one of the only guys that have this opportunity to go play the number one player in the country, and, and that guy's a quarterback. So um, if you're any kind of competitor, like, your juices should be flowing. You should be excited about having that chance. And, um, as a coach, we're excited to have that chance to, to kind of drop some, uh, some stuff defensively and see what we can do against them. Our season last year was very disappointing. Uh, great kids, they worked really hard, but we didn't accomplish what we wanted to. Uh, these guys have worked their butt off to try to get, get us back where we belong, um, trying to compete for the OAA Red title. Um, this particular team has chosen a model of courage for our season. Um, we were greatly motivated by a young man named Steve Gleason. He's just won the award from Arthur Ashe Award in the ESPYs, demonstrating great courage. and. Uh, he has sent us a personal message in 2021 before the state finals. And he, ampl he amplifies everything about our sport and everything about passion and courage. So hopefully we can live up to the expectations he set for us and we set for ourselves. We open against Romeo week one. Let's go OAA. We have a lot of guys that I think are really good players. Uh, not a lot of them have a ton of experience playing a lot of varsity minutes, just to be honest. Uh, we brought the line because I think, like I said, in front of the group, they're a strength of the team. They do all the little things the right way. They're leaders in the weight room, leaders in the school, all stuff like that. Um, but we also have a ton of guys on defense. We started 10 seniors on defense last year. And some of those guys were rotational players. We had some sophomores get on the field, and we're going to be really counting on them to take that next step. And that'll probably determine how good of a team we are. What is the expectation for your coach? Really just go out and compete. Like, like you said, the schedule, is, you said uh, murderous, it's really challenging. If we go out there and just compete and like trust our process, we think by the end of the year we'll be in a spot where we got a shot. 
the Lake Orion Dragons kick off the um, 2024 football season on Thursday, August 29th. As they travel to Northville to take on the Mustangs, the Dragons' home opener will be on week three, September the 13th, as they host the Troy Colts at Dragon Stadium. From Rochester, I'm Sammy Termina for O1 TV News. Thanks, Sammy. One of Lake Orient's hidden gems is the Horseshoe Pits located near the Orient Art Center. On occasion, you might spot members of the Lake Orient Horseshoe Club throwing ringers during a tournament. Recently, the club was the site of an event that brought in players from all over the state. On Saturday, August 3rd, the Michigan Horseshoe Pitchers Association hosted their state doubles championship tournament right here in Lake Orion. 52 pitchers formed 26 teams in six different classes, with each team member pitching 24 horseshoes. The Lake Orion Horseshoe Club hosts the state doubles tournament every year. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice facility. The courts are all in great shape. Um, a lot our games here in the MHPA, the majority of them are played in clay. They don't have to. They don't have to be clay. I think a lot of people's first experience is sand, and that's predominant. It's because it's easier to take care of. But no, the, the place is great. They're all in line here. We have, you know, pretty good uh, surrounding. I mean, they're, they're tucked in here. This is a little more uh, urban than uh, some other places, but no, it's a great facility, great space. Um, so yeah, glad to be here. The MHPA season runs almost year round with events taking place indoors during the winter months. The current season winds down on August 23rd, 24th and 25th with the state singles tournament in Kalamazoo. So it's never too late to start. OK, um, if you're looking to get into the state tournament, that might be too late, but it's never too late to come in, pitch in tournaments. Um, even though we, we think of the, se the season ends with our state tournament, we have tournaments in September, we have them in October, we have them in November, and then those count as for minimums. So today you have to have at least pitched in one tournament this season, um, which is anything after the state tournament to now. Um, for the state, what I mean by state tournament is the state singles tournament. For the state singles tournament, you've had to pitch in four. So it might be probably too late to join now um, to get in that tournament, but it's never too late to come join. Um, it's real easy to join. You can go to mhpahorseshoes.com. You'll see a link. Uh, join us. You can click there. You can fill out, fill out the application there. Um, you can show up to any tournament. We have a couple different uh, levels to join now. Um, you can one time free. You can do a provisional or you can become a full. And all you have to do is show up at a tournament. Um, if it is your first time, you do have to you do have to qualify. So these teams here today, they're classed by the ringer percentage. So in order to qualify, you would we would ask you to pitch 100 shoes before that tournament. And then, like I said, if it was 50 out of 100, then you'd be a 50% pitcher. And we would try to class you with with pitchers as close to that percentage as we can. It really just comes down to who shows up to pitch in the tournament that day. So yep, you can go to mhpahorseshoes.com. You can show up to any tournament, um, which. How do you know where those are? If you go to mhpahorseshoes.com, we have the schedule there. And you can even go out to the National Horseshoe Pitchers Association, so the nhpa.com, and join us. And you'll click that, and it'll ask you, okay, what charter? And all you got to do is say Michigan. Yeah. The Lake Orion Horseshoe Club season begins the first Tuesday in May and runs 15 weeks, coming to an end with a banquet in August. For more information, you can visit lakeorionhorseshoeclub.com. You can also find them on Facebook. And with that, we'll wrap up this edition of ONTV News. On behalf of the hardworking ONTV News team, I'm Stacey Calloway. Thanks so much for watching.